Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment. I'm standing next to a 2019 John Deere X350. I'm going to be giving you a complete walk around and overview of this mower while also showing you some key maintenance and service points. So if this video helps you out, hit that subscribe button below and let's get started. So to start this video, let's talk a little bit about model numbers and what they mean to the machine itself. So right here we have an X350. The X3 is going to be the indicator of the tractor style mower. So the X3 is the 3 series. Now we also have X5s and X7s which move up in size as they do in number. So moving on here we have the 5. This is going to be the indicator of the tractor within the X3 series and what type of features and functions it has which we'll get into more here in just a minute. Last digit here is going to indicate the type of steer that this machine has. With a zero, it's going to be a two-wheel steer, meaning only steering here at the front. You can also have a four at the end, which makes the tractor a four-wheel steer, meaning steering from the front and the rear, having all four wheels turn to give that tractor a tighter turning radius or almost like a zero turn feel. So from here, let's get underneath the hood. So getting underneath the hood, I just want to first point out how easy it is to raise and lower this hood. If you notice, there's no latches uh, on some other models or some other brands. We have latches on both sides we have to undo before getting under the hood. This is very easy to get underneath and get into it from either side, wherever you're at. So super easy there. Next thing I want to point out is just how open this whole engine is. Everything's very easy to get to. Um, you can see your different service points that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but next, over here on this side, I want to point out that this is a Kawasaki engine. Uh, if you look here on top, a lot of people see that it's branded John Deere, so they think this is a John Deere engine. But it's actually a Kawasaki engine that is built to John Deere standards to fit the mower and to perform the way they want it to perform. So just keep that in mind. It's a Kawasaki. It's also an 18 and a half horse. Um, so, you know, as you can tell, it's 18 and a half horse. Some people may think that's a low horsepower, but as you can see, we also have a very large deck on it. It's a good size mower, has plenty of power and torque to do what we need to do. Uh, next thing we want to point out while looking at this cover, this is going to be your air filter cover. So this is an air cooled engine. And as you saw, very easy to turn those hand nuts, take this off. Very easy to get to that air filters. We know we're going to have to get in there, blow it out, keep it clean. I'm going to set it back on, turn our hand nuts back the other way right back installed there. Next thing we point out is our engine oil. Here's our fill, very big, yellow, very easy to see that this is where our fill is. Moving right down below it, we have our oil filter. Also very easy to get to, no shrouding in the way. And then our oil drain, very convenient at the bottom here, right where we could put our oil pan, easy to get to that to drain. So very easy maintenance on the oil system there. Right back behind the engine here, we have our inline fuel filter. Also easy to get to, have these two clips to take off, replace that uh, fuel filter there. Back behind here, once again, guys, easy to get to. The battery is held in by this rubber strap here. And take that out and change it if we need to. Super easy to service. Moving back to the side of it, we have our fuse panel here. Now from the factory, it comes wired, it just comes shut with the zip tie just to help not lose that cap. Cut that off, take this top off, and get to those fuses that you need to get to. Over here on this side, we can see very easy to get to our spark plug right here and you have the corresponding one on the other side as this is a v-twin engine so have our corresponding spark plug on this side i know i've said it many many times in this short amount of time but guys super easy to service great homeowner mower easy to get to everything next thing i want to point out is our service interval panel right here underneath the hood you can't lose it it's stuck to the hood you can see exactly when you need to perform what services here you know as we see here change our air filters every hundred hours change our engine and oil fil filter every hundred hours one thing to keep in mind here guys there is no dot before the 100 hours. So literally your first oil change needs to be at 100 hours or yearly, whatever you prefer there. There is no break-in period on this mower. So you don't have to go eight hours and then change your oil first thing. You've got that 100 hours or that yearly maintenance plan to start out front right off of the showroom floor. So from here guys, let's jump into the operator station and show you those features and functions there. So before hopping on this mower and getting into the operator station, I just want to point out a few things. And the main thing here is this seat, guys. As you can see, very wide seat. 
uh, very comfortable open back which is great for that airflow you know you're gonna be on this thing during the summer during those hot days like it is today sunny and hot any air that you can get there to your back to cool you off is great it is a high back seat so it's gonna support you throughout the day so I'm gonna hop on here and just show you um, you know I'm 5'10 280 um, I'm a bigger guy and as you can see I have plenty of room here plenty of foot room everything's easy to get to but if I was shorter, maybe a little smaller person, I do have adjustments here. So I've got my adjustment here underneath the seat. Very easy to pull in, scoot forward. Um, I can get to those things, you know, to make it easier here in the operator station. So guys, I'm going to start here from the left of the machine and work my way across. First thing I want to point out is this pedal here down to my left. This is going to be our deck raise and lower foot assist. So as you can see there, I've got it in the upright and lock position, but as I push on it here, now you can see it raise a little bit. If I wanted to let this deck down, I would push in with my foot, push in on my mower lift lever, which is right down here, to release it. And then now whenever I let off, this is going to release me down to my cutting height. So to raise back up, I push in with my foot, raise my mower lifting lever here, that sets the lock, and when I let off, we're back in that riding position. Now, I talked about a little bit about cutting height, and when I let off here, letting it down to that height. Now, how I adjust that is gonna be down here uh, on my floorboard in between my legs, and as you can see here, we're set right about three, um, but as you push in on that pedal, you can change this height of cut by turning this lever to wherever you need to be at, and then once you let off, we let our lever off and let it down, now we've changed our height of cut down to that two and a half position. So these do have the quarter inch increments uh, that you can that we showed there. So you can choose anywhere from that one inch all the way up to four inch here. That quarter inch increments all the way in between. Now moving up here onto the dash to the left hand side, we can see here we have our throttle adjustment here, and we've also got our choke lever. Now this is spring assisted, so when starting this mower, you are not able to leave it in the choke position. Once you start this mower and having it on choke, when you let go, it'll come down out of choke, keeping you from leaving that mower in choke and causing the smoke and all those different things. So great little feature there that most people don't think about, but that spring assisted choke is great. Um, Next button here, right next to our mower lift lever, which we showed a minute ago, we have this yellow button here. And as you can see, it's not indicated by anything. You know, everything else is labeled here. This button is not. But what this is, is gonna be what's called our RIO button or our rear implement operation button. So what that means is if we're needing, when we're going along, we're mowing, we have those blades on. If we needed to back up and keep mowing, we would need to hold this button down. Because if not, this mower does have a sensor and a safety system that will kick those blades off if we start to go in reverse reverse with them on. So keep in mind, if you need to mow in reverse, we're going to hold this button down and then we can mow in reverse. So moving over here and point out, you know, of course our steering wheel here, very comfortable 14 inch steering wheel. Um, sometimes that doesn't mean a lot to people, but the wider the steering wheel, the easier for the turning, making it easy as this is a non-power steering model. Within the X3 series, we do have power steering models to make it easier, but this is not a power steering model, so that larger steering wheel really helps with that turning. Right above it, we have our LCD display here. We turn that on, you can see it's very bright and vivid. We have the electronic fuel gauge here on the dash. We can see that we have our battery meter there, we have our hour meter, we have an indicated parking meter there showing that our parking brake is on. And then over here on the other side, this is gonna indicate what RPMs we're at and what RPMs we need to be at when mowing. So when you're raising this throttle lever over here on the side, there will be a little bar that will go up on that mower meter there showing you once you are revved all the way up and that bar has climbed into the green indicator here on your screen you know you're the at optimum mowing speed for those blades to be turning like they need to be so very great display probably the best feature here is that gas that fuel gauge there no looking for that sight gauge or looking on the side of the tank it's right there in front of you you can always see it know how much fuel you have so right here on our, our on our ignition switch of course we have three position we have the stop the start and the light position. So this mower does have headlights on the front. If you need to mow at night, you do have that position. Once you've started the mower, uh, the key would be here, and then you can flip it back one switch there to turn those headlights on. Moving down below the ignition switch, we have our PTO button here. This is what's gonna turn our blades on and off. Very easy system, up is on down is off when starting those blades we don't want to be at low throttle 
or at all the way high throttle, but somewhere here in the middle to take it easy on that clutch when starting those blades. We get it right here in the middle, have our mower on, turn this on, start our blades, and then go ahead and raise on up to get into that cutting speed there. So right below that, we do have our parking brake lever here. Very easy to see orange to indicate that parking brake, just like you would on most of our other pieces of equipment. Uh, to the left of that even, we have our uh, cruise control button here. Now, some people laugh at this feature, think it's very silly, but guys, I'm telling you, this will help a ton with fatigue on those long days when you're mowing those uh, large fields or, or whatever you're doing to keep you from having to hold down on these pedals all day long and get at the speed you want, hit that cruise control just like your car, let off the pedals, make your circles and mow your grass without having to tire out these legs. So, uh, over here on the right hand side, we've got our three pedals here. This is going to be our brake pedal. So this corresponds with our parking brake. We push it in and lower our lever here and then release and that takes our parking brake off. Push it back in, raise our lever up and that sets our parking brake. Now, below that, we have our John Deere twin touch pedals here. This tractor is hydrostatic, meaning it's not gear driven. You never will have to reach back or to your sides to change gears to get into those different speeds. You literally have your speed selector here at your throttle and then your other speed selection is down here at your feet with your forward and reverse pedal. So very easy to see. You have an arrow here for forward and an arrow here for reverse. Very easy to drive, pushing those fore and aft. Uh, to go to those different speeds and to change change directions super simple not having to reach for that gear to go back into reverse you have it right there at your feet so from here guys i'm going to hop off show you some of the extra features around the back side here and then we'll move to the deck Okay, so a couple things here at the rear of the mower and some things that you may have never thought about or never noticed, or you wouldn't notice unless we pointed them out. And we're gonna go underneath the seat here. And we talked about, you know, the, the quality of this seat, the thickness of it, and the comfortability of this ride. Because the main thing that causes that ride, that ride quality, is gonna be these springs here. And one thing that people don't notice is that there is a three-point adjustment here on these springs. So you can slide these forward, slide it to the middle, slide it to the rear, and try those out to see which one of those positions fits you best for that ride quality. Next thing we point out here is our safety switch. We just want to make sure this is always engaged here as it will keep you from starting those blades if this is not plugged all the way in. Uh, next thing, and this part slips past a lot of people, this is going to be your deck leveling kit. We'll go over this a little bit more when we get to the deck, but just notice it fits nice and smooth underneath here in the deck, out of the way, but you always have it. It locks in. You can always carry it with you. Next thing that we'd point out here is to our right, we do have our cup holder here, uh, you know, to carry that bottle of water or beverage throughout the day. We also have this nice cubby here that, you know, hold our cell phones or wallets or whatever those things may be. Nice convenience feature there. This mower does come with an extra key. So it's right there in that model. Uh, moving over here to the left, we have our wide three inch opening here for our fuel. This is a 3.3 gallon fuel tank. It also comes there with the tethered lid. So you're not gonna lose that lid. You have that wide opening there, making it a lot easier to fill that gas tank up. Um, and like we said before, 3.3 gallons. Usually in these mowers, you get about a gallon an hour uh, of fuel to your mowing time. So just keep in mind, you should be able to mow about three hours straight with that three gallon tank there. Uh, moving down here to the very rear of the mower, down here towards the bottom, Notice that we do have this hitch hole here. Now, a lot of people think, oh, you know, you said at the beginning, this is a medium level tractor and it's not a full size tractor. And that's correct, but you can pull things around with this, say like your fertilizer spreader, or instead of having to push that wheelbarrow, uh, now you can get you, you know, a yard wagon here to do those different things around your property, which is something that you can't do with the push mower. So keep in mind again, when moving up to this tractor and riding style, you now have that option for attachments here at the rear to make those jobs easier around your place. Uh, another thing that gets asked a lot is going to be this lever here. John Deere has gone in and they've put in this um, sticker here to help you understand that, you know, with this pushed in, we're going to drive the mower. When it's pulled out, we can push the mower. And I have a lot of people ask, why, why would I need to push this mower? Uh, and this is going to be for those instances where maybe the mower is not functioning, it's not running, uh, you know, it's broken down or you're out of gas and you need to get it off of the yard or out of the place that it's in. You can pull this lever out, that unlocks this transmission, we can take off our parking brake and that allows this mower to be pushed freely because just releasing the parking brake and having this in still locks that transmission into where you cannot push it. So very good feature to know there. Uh, from here guys, Let's go around and talk about the mowing deck. Is this going to be the most important feature on this mower? And what people want to know the most about is the mowing deck there. So let's go spend a little time over there on that. So now here at the mower deck, guys, we'll point out that what we have on this model is an XL Deep 
48. Now, this is not the only deck that you can get with the X350. You can also get a 42 inch XL Deep and you can also get a 42 inch edge mulching deck. So that one has to be special ordered from the factory as it will not come standard on an X350, uh, but you can get that deck for this mower. But for today's purposes, we're talking about the XL Deep 48 inch deck. So going around talking about some of the features of this, we'll just start out here right on top, right in the middle, we have our uh, spring loaded spindle covers here now very easy to get to you know we need to have this easy to get to because we need to keep debris out from underneath these spindles as you know as we're mowing grass is flipping up on top of there they're clogging these up and they'll cause our belts to jump off so we need to be keeping this clean right here on top it gives you some tips of that it says use air not water uh, you know a lot of people like to wash their mowers off when they're done but one thing to keep in mind on that guys is the more water that we're putting on these mowers and on these exposed metal surfaces the more rust we have where rust is causes damage so anytime you can take your blower maybe that air compressor and blow these off you're a lot better off there uh, to do that so next here as you can see here we have our little grease gun icon and we have an arrow here showing we do have a grease zerk right underneath here so seems a little bit cumbersome to get to but guys something to keep in mind there is grease is very important on these machines we need to keep those spindles greased keep them running keep them running smoothly as this is the main functioning part of our mower this is why we have it is to run these spindles and to run these blades so some of those things maybe to make this easier is to get an attachment for your grease gun to be able to stick that underneath like a Gertec quick coupler stick it underneath lock it on you can come back here pump your grease pop it off move around to the next one not as cumbersome and not as hard as what it may seem so just keep that in mind very important look into that see if you can get something to make that job easier to where you'll think about it and maybe do it more often uh, looking around here on the side of this deck one thing about the 48 xl deep is it's a little heavier built deck this is going to be 10 gauge steel our 42 inch decks are going to be 12 gauge steel so a little a little thicker a little more heavy duty you can see it has the extra weld mounts welded on here around the edge of the deck as this is going to be your edging surface here we have these heavy duty caster wheels here these are going to be similar to what you would see on your commercial series decks here very easy to change position raise that pin up raise our wheel up or pull that pin out rather raise our wheel up and change position of that pin so super easy to do that this is what's going to help keep your deck up out of the dirt and off of the grass to keep it from scalping so very important that when we get ready to go do that mowing we adjust these scalp wheels to the position we need to be at to get that premium cut uh, next thing to point out here is going to be our washout port now we have a lot of people ask do these really work and are these really worth it and the answer is yes they are if they weren't worth it john deere would not waste their time putting them on here so when you go to use these what you're going to do is you're going to hook your water hose up we're going to raise our anti-scalp wheels all the way up get on a concrete surface lower that deck all the way to the ground turn the water on and then turn on our blades and what that's going to do is cause suction to come up and really churn that water the blade's going to be spinning it around and really cause that to clean underneath on that deck if you're on grass or you're on the concrete but your deck is raised up that water is going to do nothing but fall down to the ground guys the blades are going to catch some of it but it's not going to truly clean that deck so i want to make sure and put it all the way down on the ground hook the hose up turn the blades on and really use this washout port like i said if it wasn't worth it it wouldn't be on there so from here while we're on this side guys we'd mentioned the deck leveling kit so i want to talk a little bit about it you do have this little plug here and it tells you here one two three this is going to be the positions if this was a picture of your deck which it does kind of match if you were standing at the back of the mower like this this is what your deck would look like so we're going to set this little piece upside down on each corner so starting out we would set it on this back corner now keep in mind we'd want to be on the concrete on a level surface and have this deck up at the two and a half inch position but we would set this down and we'd raise our deck up and set it on top of this or to where if it wasn't level it wouldn't be touching but we'd set it down to where it needs to be touching this we would get our tool out we have a hole right here in front of the seat we put this tool down through this hole come down and you can see where the tool is going to go in right here and what this is is a bolt that's connected here that we can turn and change the up and down position depending on how we turn this lever and that's going to be how you adjust the levelness from the side to side on this deck so very easy like i said they give you the tool it's underneath the seat you may as well use it now it says here also c 
manual for use. So guys, make sure you go ahead and get in that operator manual. Check that out so you make sure you're doing this uh, the best way that it instructs you to do. So from here, guys, let's move around to the other side of the deck and talk about over there. Over here on the right-hand side of the mower and looking at the discharge side of the deck, most things look the same here. And you know, we still have our uh, spring-loaded spindle cover here. Still have that grease circuit underneath that we need to make sure and be handling. Um, same thing. We want to be blowing these out, keeping dirt and debris out from underneath those spindles uh, so we keep our belt free and clear. Uh, we still have our two our gauge wheels here on both corners. Uh, and then, of course, our spring-loaded discharge chute. Now, one thing I like to point out is just how wide of an opening this here is at the discharge. Uh, a lot of people, you know, don't think about that being a big deal. But, guys, the more discharge opening you have, the better disbursement of those grass clippings, the further that's going to go out, and just the better cut quality you're going to get by getting that material out of the deck. Um, the other thing too is, you know, with that opening, you know, we see there that we do have the blades. It's a 48 inch deck, so we do have three blades underneath here. Another question we get a lot of the time is, being that this is a deck mounted underneath the mower, how do I go about changing my blades? Well, there's a couple of different ways. A lot of guys, what they'll do is run this mower up on car ramps and then block there at the rear tires. Make sure that we're keeping that mower safely up on those ramps and then just crawling underneath the mower um, and changing those blades. But the way that we recommend um, is to actually take the deck off which seems like a very cumbersome and hard thing to do, but I'm just gonna show you that really it's not. Uh, starting here at the front, first thing we'd need to do is to release this rod out. Seems like it'd be hard to do, but you actually just have a pin here on this side. By releasing this pin, you can pull this rod out and doing the same thing on the other side. Once you have that rod out, you can literally just take it up and out of the hooks here. Now on the back side, this is where a lot of tools and things come into play usually on mowers, but right here, we have a pull pin system. Once you set this deck down on the ground or relieve the pressure, you can literally just pull this pin out as you see me pulling on it here to release that out. And then your deck will slide out from underneath the mower. Then you can raise it up, change your blades, however you need to do. Now, like I said, this is a 10 gauge heavy steel deck here stamped out of one solid piece of steel. So it's not gonna be easy to just pull out unless you know a little tip and trick, something you might've thought of is you can actually release these anti-scalping wheels and turn them around, release them on each side. And then as you pull that out, those wheels will follow, making it very easy to pull that deck out from underneath. So not as bad as it seems, pretty easy to service and to change those blades as long as you know um, where to go and what to take loose there. And then just go in reverse order when putting it back together. Um, one thing too, while we're on this side, and we talked a little bit about it at the rear, is just attachability of this mower. Guys, you can customize this mower how you'd like it, add the attachments that you want. Uh, one thing that we get asked is, well, what about mulching kits and bagging kits? And they're both yes and yes. You can add both of those functions to this mower. Uh, you can add that bagging kit running there to the back. You will need the blower on this 48 inch deck. On a 42 inch deck, you're not required the blower, which is that extra piece of equipment on the side to blow clippings to the back. Uh, for the mulch kit, now they make a solid mount mulch kit that once you put it on, your mower is a mulcher. But they also make what's called mulch control, which is a very neat system. Uh, it either comes with a lever or an electric push button that will open and close baffles inside the deck and here on the side that you can control when you want it to mulch and when you want it to side discharge. So very neat feature there. Uh, you know, we talked about the attachments at the rear with the pull type carts and the fertilizer spreaders. Uh, one thing that I failed to mention before is you do have this pop out here that you can add that 12 volt outlet. So now we can add those things like our cell phone chargers uh, so we can have those here on the mower. Um, all things that you need uh, to add for that comfort and convenience and just to add to your operation and make this mower what you want it to be. Uh, so from here, guys, I hope you've seen everything you need to see about this, about this mower. I hope maybe this has helped influence your decision on whether this machine fits your operation or not. Um, if you like this video and like what you've seen, please hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Seven, we get larger frame, more options, and a puppy dog. I don't even know whose dog that is. John Deere X350. Uh. <laughs> Not having that happen again. Shut up. Are you ready? All right, tell me when. We're gonna be showing you. I still don't like that. I don't like how this video helps you. Would you <laughs> see, that's so, that's so unnatural. Hey guys, it's Brent with Western Equip. <laughs> Start over. 
Chris is back there smiling. Look at him. What, what is that look on his face? Go this way. I'm standing next to a 2019 guy. <laughs> and maintenance points. If they, if, if, dang it, I was killing it in the X3 series. So the... In John Deere tractors, we... Lawn tractors. Lawn tractors. So make sure that we're keeping that engaged there. That's really loud. It's really loud. Man, there's there's another one right behind you. They're spraying all over the place. 